Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek of it, I am Penge and it's time for some more Imperator Rome and our quest to unite the not so at the moment United Kingdom, although really I kind of don't even see it as a quest anymore, it's sort of civic duty, I feel like very much it's a civic duty because I'm British and this, this just won't do at all, oh my goodness it's very un-British indeed, all these sort of squabbling clans and everyone's having little sort of petty wars and petty fights and they're all insulting each other and calling everyone names behind their backs and it's all rather terrible. This is supposed to be Great Britain, this is supposed to be a united kingdom and it this just won't do, it won't do at all. So I am now feeling very much obliged as a Brit to sort all this out and get everybody under one banner, the banner of Coritania. And last time out we actually made some good steps toward getting that underway because we took Icenia. We took all this territory from the Icenes. We came in with a little bit of a war, primarily because of this place here, Dura Vigitum. That was kind of the sort of uh, trigger for the war because they had iron. And we wanted iron because we didn't have any iron. So now that means we can train some proper troops. I think they're warriors, aren't they? Yeah, so they're warriors. So look, they've got proper big shields and big pointy stabby weapons. So yes, we can actually build some proper troops now, which is very, very welcome indeed. I like that idea. But um, yeah, as part of the war, we didn't only just take this place. We took the entire, entire nation of Icenia. They are now not part of the game anymore. They have been removed and we have got all their territory. And it gives us a fairly sizable chunk of land. It's very, very good. Look at that. And also, the uh, Icenians had quite a lot of these guys. They had quite a lot of citizens. And the citizens are the top, sort of, they're top of the tree. They're the, the top sieves, if you like. The top pops. And they bring us research points. But even with all the fancy pants people over here, all the lovely fancy top level pops, all your citizens from here over in Icenia, we still get this message up here which tells us that we have a bad research ratio. Citizens produce 0.5 research points each month with an output of six each year and a population of 89. We are getting an efficiency of 7% for our research. <laughs> that is quite poor, isn't it? 7% and then the little sort of the little note at the bottom there just to rub it in just to rub salt into the wound maximum efficiency cannot be higher than 300% 300 <laughs> we're only on seven I think you can remove that message for a little while so yeah we've got some work to do there and also I have learned a bit more about the game I've been watching uh, various tutorials made by the always excellent many a true nerd and I have picked up a few little bits and bobs that I kind of hadn't picked up on before and there's something I need to do right now because I'm kind of unaware of this. I wasn't really sure what this was last time I played. This little skull thing here means that this military unit here, this warband, is, is being attritioned. Because this place here, Duroliponti, does not have enough about it to supply this army with what they need to you know, continue going. It's not going to have food and water and whatever else they need. So we need to make sure these guys are actually in a place which can support them. And you can use the map mode for this. So the map mode, all these things here a different map mode thingamajiggers. And there's so many, there's so many sort of overlays. We want this one. We want the supply map mode. So we can click that. And then we've clicked on the unit we want to see that, you know, that, uh, that is in trouble, that we need supplying. And then we can see the different areas that can supply them and that can't. So they're in sort of an area which they can't really supply them, but it's not terrible. So they only get 0.2% attrition. If we move them into here, they would suffer 3% attrition. However, if we move them over here, 0% attrition because Lactodorum is able to support them entirely fully. So I think it might be a good idea to move them over there. That's a good thing, because then they won't be attritioned, our manpower will continue to go up, because it'll increase, because we won't be spending it on replenishing these guys. That's all lovely. Um, are these guys also struggling? Yeah, now they're not being attritioned, I don't think. They're just not being attrition. Nothing's happening there. But let's move them over to Venter. That's a good thing. So they, they might start topping up as well. And then these guys here, yeah, they're absolutely fine. They've got enough in there, I think. Yeah, no percent attrition. That's all good. That's all fine. They will start to replenishing as well. Okay, that's all lovely. See, so, yep, come out of that. Lovely, lovely. That's all good. So we've moved those guys around. When we unpause time, they'll start shifting around. And now, what I think we need to do, we need to have a little period of stability. We just need to have a little while where we just let everything calm down because we've had a big war. Lots of people. Essentially, our war dragged pretty much the south into conflict. 
and there's been a big war and tensions are running a bit high and our meter here so aggressive expansion is it, it's sort of like a threat level i suppose it's sort of how scary you are <laughs> to the other sieves i guess and um that is on 3.61 now that doesn't seem very much particularly there's a little bit there that says if it goes above 50 severe penalties kick in obviously we're nowhere near 50 but we've got 3.61 and it only comes down by 0.04 each month which is not very much at all. So that actually is going to take a fairly long time to clear down. So I think we just need to stay out of trouble for a little bit. We'll try and get ourselves some oratory power because we need that to lay down some more claims on places if we do want to go to war again at some point. And we can start getting some technologies in, maybe some uh, science, uh, some science, some religion. <laughs> that's that's the opposite. That's not science. Get some more of these things in. You know, just start sort of racking up some of the basic things up here. And there is a thing in here as well. This military power, we can use that on these things down here, barbarian traditions. We need 800 points, but then we can start getting some very interesting things along here as well. So yeah, so that will be quite good as well. So we just need to sort of sit back, relax, maybe build up some stuff. If we get some gold, maybe we try and do some trading now and all that kind of stuff. We've got extra resources. So yes, a little sort of, a little period of quiet stability and sort of reflection would be quite a good thing. And there we go, our first warband has shuffled over into Lactodora, modern day toaster, and they are now fully supported. They are not suffering attrition anymore, so they're not losing people. That is all splendid. And you can see up here, when the um, number here in this little outline thing is red, I think that is when they're suffering attrition. So there we go. So now we can see that it's all fine. And a couple of things have popped up. Let's clear the insulting bad research ratio thing. We don't want to be reminded of that. We've got a thing here, breaking alliances, Dabunia are possibly considering to leave us. They plan to declare war on us, our ally or our league member. That is unfortunate. Dabunia are these guys here and they're quite powerful. They've got an army. Oh, actually that's quite bad. This could be quite bad. It says up there they're planning to attack us. They've got an army of 12,000 men just stood here next to us. That's, that's quite concerning. I mean, also, they're next to here as well. They're next to here. I think it might be worth going to have a little look at who they're allied with. Where's the um, where's the diplomacy bit? Where is that in here somewhere? There it is, the sort of flag thing. So if we click on these guys, we can see what their current state of affairs is. So I think blue is allied. Yeah, so blue is allied. So they're allied with us. Ah, they're allied with those guys. They're allied with the Trinovantians down there. They're allied with the guys over here in sort of southeast Wales. What's purple mean? Oh, they're trading, right, and they're trading with these two. So they're unlikely to be going to war with those two, I would have thought, because they're trading, so they'll be making money and getting resources. Um, would they be going to war with them or us? Oh, this 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 could be a problem, couldn't it? Okay, fine, right. Okay, thank you for letting me know. That's a little bit worrying. And an envoy from the Pratani local power of Cantasia, that's those guys down there. That's the southeast, uh, is requesting to import salt from the province of Icenia. Ah, it would earn us 0.51 each month. Oh, that could be quite good because we do not earn a lot of gold right now. We don't earn a lot of gold because our army maintenance is so high. It's so high up. It's just such a silly number. 4.5 each month. That's quite expensive. So yeah, I think that might be a good thing. Where's the trade thing? Yeah, so currently we're... Yeah, there you go. So we're exporting... Some salt to Votid, Votidinia. Votidinia? Where is that? Oh, no, don't cancel it. I just want to know where they were. I just want to try and find out where they were. But, um, no, I don't. I can't quite identify where they are on the map. But whatever the case, we're exporting salt there. What's our surplus of salt? Have we just got... Oh, right, we've still got another one. We've still got another surplus of salt, even though we've traded one away. Oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yes, we'll have that then. Because we're not doing anything with it. So yeah, 0 0.51 extra monies per month. That is very welcome. I'll take that because we need all the money we can get. Now there is something that I want to do down here in our newly taken over area. So the province of Icenia. And incidentally, I now understand provinces a little bit better than I did last time out. So they're like a collection of cities. But a province is not necessarily all going to be held by one nation. For example, that province there. This thing is a little bit in the way. Can you move? Thank you very much. Disagreement. Okay, I'll come to you in a minute. Wait there, disagreeing people. It's like looking after children, is it? Um, so yeah, this place here, this is the province. This is a big province. And we control a bit of it. We control the majority of it. But these three places down here still belong to that province. 
but they're not under our control. These guys, these cities here, are owned by the Trinovantians, and we own this top bit, and the province is Icenia, I believe. Yes, the province of Icenia. So, um, yeah, so it, that's how provinces work. So they're split up. They're split up, or they can be. You could own an entire province, and that would be lovely and fine. And I bet there's some bonuses or something you get for that. But, yeah, with this one, we don't... Maybe we should do relatively soon. I mean, these guys I've got my eyes on. Cantasia, no, not Cantasia, the Trinovantian, sorry. I've got my eyes on for getting them, for getting this place, because they look like relatively easy targets. They don't have a lot of land. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six cities. Six cities under their control, so we could go for those next. But yeah, that's still going to be a little way off. Um, okay, so let's also, let's now deal with this thing. So disagreement on the highest level. What is going on? Taximagulus Vodenosus a man of sound reputation, and Vinoma Inamica, a noble woman of great virtue, have recently started to spar furiously while attending the clan council. I think these guys are our uh, clan leaders. Aren't they the clan leaders of the other clans that are ruling? Hang on. Government. Yes, they're the clan chief. So our government is made up of these three clans here. We've got him, who's the leader, but he doesn't have a sort of retinue, but that's fine. And then we've got you who's this guy here, and then her, who's that person over there. Oh no, our clan chiefs are squabbling. Such behaviour is unbecoming of these people of stature, isn't it just? Again, we're British, we shouldn't be doing this. However, we have been called upon to take a side in this latest conflict. Okay, so if we side with him, then he it becomes friends with us which I imagine is a good thing. I don't know what the in-game benefits are, but I imagine it sort of maintains loyalty with us. Um, he gets 10 loyalty, current is 58, and she loses 20 loyalty. Oh my goodness me, that brings her down to 34, that would. Ooh, <laughs> that could be quite bad. I'm going to guess this is the other way round. Yep, so if we side with her, she's friend, she gets loyalty, he loses 20. And if we tell them to just stop being silly... Both sides lose a lot of loyalty, but we become a little bit more popular. And we've only got a popularity of 18. Now, the problem with this is that if you have characters that have a low loyalty, and I think a loyalty of 30 is where the trouble really kicks off, then they appear up here and they become disloyal characters. And they might then go and do things on their own. They're not loyal to us anymore. They just want to go and do their own things. So they're thinking, well, I don't really care about him anymore. I don't care about the tribal chief. What does he know? The guy's an idiot. I'm going to go and do my own thing. So this could be a problem because this is how sort of rebellions and civil wars and stuff start. And this could be quite bad. So if we side with him, he gets some loyalty and we become friends. But she loses loyalty. That's the other way around. And this way, they both lose loyalty and we become popular. That sounds silly. Because rather than having one person sort of potentially going to war against us and creating trouble, we could have both of them. That seems a little bit of a stupid thing to do. I think, who's best? Now it says there that he is likely the next tribal chief. He has got nine sort of military power. He's got seven civic, two oratory and no religion at all. He's got no kind of faith power at all. He's got no religious power. Okay. Whereas she has only got three martial ability, eight civic, one oratory, and three religion. Okay, I, he, he seems better. How old's my guy? 33. And that guy's 51. Oh, good job, sir. 51 years old at this particular period in time of history. That's very, very good. I think I might side with him. I might go with him. Also, he is a bit more loyal. So 58%. That's good if we give it a boost. That's going to keep him loyal for longer. Um, how can we can we see loyalty in here how much does that decrease 0.39 per month oh my goodness me oh wow that really is coming down very quickly isn't it okay good grief ah but in Coritania, loyalty is a maximum of 80 due to is a tribe 100 but then insular clans okay i don't really know what that means okay but so his is going down by 0.39 what about hers what's yours doing 0.44 per month oh dearie me so each month She's losing almost half a point of loyalty. So over a year, she is going to lose six-ish, more or less, maybe a tad less. And what's her loyalty now? 54. Yeah, this this is quite bad. We need to do some of this stuff with her. We need to, if we side with him, we're going to need to do some of this stuff. Either bribe her or do some other bits and bobs. Let's do this then. Let's side with him. I think he is the better bet. Let's do that. Yeah, okay, fine. We'll side with you then. Can you, I mean, good if you could stop arguing. And look immediately that has appeared up there. So now she has 34.2 loyalty. This 
is bad. Right, time is moving on. And that is just coming down. That is just coming down. Soon that is going to be below 30. And she is going to start causing trouble. And the thing is, she owns one of these in Namika. Where are you guys? Yeah, that's hers. She's over there with these troops. That is her block of troops. And if she decides to rebel, I don't quite know what happens. I've not come across it yet. But if she rebels, then who knows what happens? She come over here, start attacking us. Or does she start taking uh, the cities over here and claiming them as her own? I do not know. But I want to avoid that at all costs. Because that just sounds terrible. We're supposed to be having a period of stability. And it lasted, what, no several months and that was it? <laughs> That's just not good enough. Okay, there's a few things that we can do, but not many. There's not a lot we can do. We could, in theory, smear her reputation. She loses popularity, which surely will then impact in other things. Surely that's a bad thing. If she's not popular, nobody's going to want to follow her, and she's not going to care. But still, that's not going to do anything to her loyalty to us. That's not going to change. So she's still going to become all kind of evil and nasty. So that's probably not going to work. We can't do that, I don't think. We could give free hands. I don't really know what this does. I'm going to assume that we kind of just go, look, just do your own thing for a bit. Do your own thing. It's fine. We'll just we'll just look away. If you want to do something that is potentially slightly dubious, then you crack on because we've given you free hands. But it does up her loyalty by 0.25 per month. So at the moment, she's losing 0.44 she would lose 0.19 per month. I used that math in my head, everybody. That was quite amazing. Um, so yeah, 0.19 per month. That would be that would be very good. But it does mean that every month she becomes a little bit more corrupt. So she gets 0.2 corruption. At the minute, she's got no corruption at all. And then if we want to take that back, if we want to say, no, give us the loyalty back, please, then it costs, uh, it's not loyalty, free hands. If we want to take that back off her and say, no, no, now you have to abide by the law again, then uh, yeah, that's 10 loyalty to revoke. That's quite a lot as well. Okay, so we could exalt her. That's good. So we pay, I think we just kind of basically throw a party. I think we throw a big old party for her. So we lose 15 monies. That's fine. She gets 10 loyalty and her loyalty goes up by 0.2. And again, in the first part where I was saying some of the numbers are really minute, this is a monthly loyalty of 0 0.2 we're talking about. I mean, it, it, they're such small numbers, but when they're like this, they really add up. It all sort of counts. So that would be 0.2. So her loyalty would then change by, it would be 0.24 per month, which is better. So what would that be? That would be losing three loyalty per year. So that would be fine. So, you know, several years could pass. We could get that done. We could bribe her or whatever. But, um, yeah, so that might be a good thing. The only thing about that is that the other two clan chiefs, including our clan leader, then get insulted clan chief and their loyalty comes down. Now, I'm not bothered about the tribal chief, but the other war chief would lose 0.1 uh, 0.1 loyalty every month. So we've just obviously gone and favoured him. <laughs> we've just gone and said, yes, we like you. Aren't you good? So um, yeah, there you go. You're our friend. And so that gives us plus 0 0.5. And then all of a sudden we're then going to go, right, okay, now we're just going to annoy you. So yours will be minus 0 0.44 as well, but your loyalty is higher. Oh my goodness me. This is a terrible thing. And this is the thing about clans. Is they're all just sort of infighting and squabbling and being kind of petty and annoying. But we can't have her on that. That loyalty is, is just too low. It will just all go horribly wrong. We could bribe her. We pay 20 oratory power, which I don't really want to spend on this. Um, She gets 20 loyalty, which will keep her loyal for, what, about three years? And then it's just going to come plummeting back down again, isn't it? Um, but also, we become corrupt. So our guy becomes a bit corrupt. She becomes very corrupt. I don't know what effect corruption has. I don't think we've got corrupt people, have we? Uh, I don't think we've got anybody that has any sort of corruption. We could always have a little check. Uh, no, I don't think we have. I don't think we've got people that are particularly corrupt. Uh, can we have a look at the high priest? No. Oh, hang on a minute. An apothecary. No, I don't think we've got anyone that's corrupt right now, which is which is good, but it means that I can't figure out what the effects are. So we need to decide what to do with her or try and make friends. But that's only 0 0.05 per month. That's not going to make much of a difference. I think we might have to do this. Let's do this. If we do that and then give her free hands, we might be able to see what the monthly corruption does. But then that will give us plus 0.25 loyalty and plus 0.2. So plus 0.45 loyalty. Her loyalty to us will go up, technically. Her loyalty to us will increase, which is very good. So let's do this first. We'll pay a little tiny bit of the monies. That's fine. We can cope with that. So she'll become a little bit more loyal to us. Yay, there you go. Have a street party. Let's all eat cake and drink. No, do we got cake? 
I've no idea what they are at at this point in time in history. I don't know. Gruel. Gruel for everybody. Gruel and slop. Uh, but these two are going to be a bit cross. And then we might give her free hands. Now, I don't know what this does. I'm going to press the button and see what it does. So she's exalted until four, five, nine. So five years. That is good. This is a good thing. Because we're like, yeah, yeah, good. Can we exalt the other one, actually? Can we do the other one? Oh, no, but then I don't know if you could, because then they're just going to get the benefits of going to cancel each other out. But then, do we need to give her this free hands thing? That's gone up, and it's going to come, it's now going to be decreasing by 0.24 each month. I think that's going to be okay. We'll have to keep an eye on that number, but then we could always do some other stuff if that starts getting a bit low. Now, the thing she's got is loyal cohorts, and I don't really know how to do stuff with that. I don't know how to bring that number down. Loyal cohorts is affecting her loyalty to us by 0 0.64. I don't really know what to do do about that right now oh yes earlier on i didn't get to finish what i was saying because we got distracted by the little squabble between the two leaders let's pause time for a second um these guys over here so the people who are in Icenia over here that we took um they are Iceni people they follow the Icenian way they are druidic Icenis and our lot up here are not that they are druidic Koritanis so they have a slightly different culture and what we can do is, if we get 55 of the oratory power, which takes us an absolute age to acquire, because our guy is completely useless, he's got no charisma at all. But when we get there, we could switch this round. So this is like a sort of, a, a, I don't know what it is, like a sort of provincial kind of governor thing that the governor tries to sort of enact upon here. It's like a policy, I suppose. So um, yeah, what we could do, we could change that. And I can't click on it right now to show because it won't let me, but we can change this. And there's one which is like a sort of a cultural sort of uh, overhaul, if you like. So it, but we, I imagine, walk in and go, hey, did you hear about, you hear about how great the Coritanian people are? They're brilliant. Coritania is great. And these guys go, well, we were Icenian, but yeah, see what you mean. I might move over from being a Druidic Iceni to being a Druidic Karatani, because those guys sound great. But unfortunately, we can't do that right now. I can't remember what it's called. It's like cultural... I don't know what it is. Cultural subversion or something. I don't know. But um, yeah, we lack the 55 the fifty five oratory power to do that. Um, This thing here is quite good. Import routes and commercial income and all that kind of stuff. Again, the trade routes, we can't do anything with. There's, there's nobody willing to trade to poor old Icenia. It's, it's not very good over there at the minute. But yeah, that's what we could do. We could certainly have a go at that. Um, this is sort of stabilised a bit. It's not coming down quite as much as it was. So 0.24 is okay. It's manageable right now, I think. So yeah, we can sort of deal with that. It's not very good, though. I still don't like the fact that it's in there. Um, let's pause time. Uh, the Pratani power of Brigantia is no longer in the defensive league. That's those guys up there. Brigantia are those guys up there. They're quite big. They've got quite a lot of territory. They're no longer in our defensive league. Um, who are you guys? Oh, that's the wrong one, isn't it? Who are you guys friends with? What's going on there? Okay, well, we'll agree with that. Yeah, that's lovely. So Brigantia is here. So you're Brigantia. So who are you buddies with? You've, you're trading with those and you're friends with those up there. And is green the... What's the green for? Oh, green's them. Is it is green them? Yes, it must be. So who are there? It's their allied. They're allied and they're trading. Oh, okay. So they've broken off with us. That could be a bit concerning, couldn't it? Are they planning to invade us by any chance? How about first warband, you come up here. Now, can you be supported there? Can you be support? Oh, okay. Come up to here. Come up as near as you can up to there. That might be an idea because I don't want to get attacked by those lot up there. You can't be supported on any of those just yet, but that's fine. Oh no, and Dabunia have broken up their alliance as well, down to their own choice. Oh dearie me. Okay, and don't think I don't see you splitting up those troops there. Don't see I don't you see you lining up across the border. Oh, hang on a minute. An alliance from Brigantia. Uh, didn't we just... Oh no, no, they didn't break an alliance. They broke a defensive pact. Oh. Oh, I'm, yes, I'll have an alliance with you, particularly if these guys are going to come attacking me. Yes, absolutely. Um, yep, yeah, we'll have a we'll have a lovely alliance with those lot. That's splendid. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Um, we've still got an alliance with... Who are we allied with? I like this little sort of quick look thing. It's great. So we're allied with Duratrigians at the bottom. We're allied with Parisia up there. And now we're allied with the Brigantians up here. And then we're trading with those guys. And we're trading with those. And we're in some sort of defensive league with those guys up there. I mean, I'm not going to be much use to them, am I? 
I'm not giving much use to them. I'm really far away. If somebody from here started coming down and attacking them, I'm not going to be able to do much about that. But okay, that's fine. Um, so yeah, that's that's interesting. I'm a bit worried about Dabunia. Oh, and they've got those on side and them. Ah, okay. And all of this now. South Wales, they've they've claimed them as well. Oh dear. Um, can I can I be friends with you? Would you like an alliance, Cornovia? Because you're quite good. Would you like an alliance? Ooh. No. Minus 41. So we will get too many relations. We have too many relations. Ah, okay. Now, yeah, there is some sort of limit. I don't quite know where that is. There's a limit to the number of things you could have, I believe. So the number of relations you can have. There you go. Diplomatic relations. You can have four of them. So I think they've got too many, possibly, of the guy. Ah, because they've got three alliances. Is that it? And then they've got... I don't really know how this works. They've got three alliances and then a defensive league which is four. So that's their maximum. So if they had an alliance with us, that will push them over. And then that then will give them some penalties, which I'm not entirely sure of what they are, but that will give them some penalties. Oh dear. I think those people are going to attack us. I think the Dabunians are going to come and attack us. This this could be a bit of a problem. Um, do I want to keep those guys over there? Or do I want to move them over here? Because these are allied as well. These guys are allied with them. So if Dabunia declare war on us, then these people will also be able to attack and they'll just send a load of troops and go bish bash bosh and take all that territory off us. Yeah, I, or do we leave them there? But then, yeah, they've got a lot of people over here. Right, you lot. Yeah, stay there. That's actually not too bad because, yeah, they're also allied. <laughs> this, this could all go horribly, horribly wrong. I'm going to bring them in over there. I'm going to move them in over here just to strengthen that front line just here and then we can move them around a bit. Uh, that's That's got to happen. They're going to declare war against us. Also, they're building a fort just there. They're building a fortress. And I guess that also does explain another uh, thing I uh, raised last time. The, there was a fort here, Inventor, which was the previous Iceni capital. And then uh, every so often we take the territory around it. And then a bit here, I think it was this place, Bramoluvuvium, whatever it is. This place here then just went, bing, actually I'm back in Iceni control. And there were no troops in it. It just kind of happened. And that's because there is a fort here and nobody of our troops was in here to sort of keep watch over this territory. So apparently forts will try and take back, and I don't know the exact mechanics, but will try and take back neighbouring cities if they have been taken by the enemy and then the enemy are no longer in them. So as long as you've got something like a thousand people in there, those thousand people protect it. You know, they go around and marshal lords and go, no, you, don't go back to those people. Stay with us. We're the best. So, uh, yeah, but the fort then changes that if there's nobody there. So that's why they changed around. And that fort there could be very, very irritating indeed. Now, we could, a fort here would be great. A fort just here would be brilliant. But we don't have the money for it. We do not have the money for a fort. Also, it takes a long time to build. Okay. Now, now I'm worried. Now I think we might get attacked and I don't really want to have to go to another war. I don't really want to, even though we're defending, even though we're defending it, you know, we won't be the aggressors this time. I'm a little bit concerned. We get 1.36 monies. Do we want to, with our guys, where's our guys there? The first war band. Do we want to just add a unit of warriors? That's what we went to war for. 0.79 to maintain. That is a huge chunk of money. That is a huge chunk of money that we're going to spend on that. 10 gold you know, straight up to just get. And then, yeah, 0 0.79 per month. Maybe not right now. If they declare war, maybe we'll rush a few of those through. We shall have to wait and see. So there we go. Look, our troops are in about as good as a position as they're going to get. Are they going to declare war on us? I really hope they don't because that would just cause all sorts of trouble. But yeah, look, they've got 12,000 people. They've got 12,000 people. Uh, mostly skirmishers and archers. And then they've got one sort of mobile, what's that, like sort of like light infantry on horseback. Now, there is something we can do with this. I don't know if I can change these. Yes, there. So even though these guys are the retinue of the clan Votanosi, the guy who I supported, he's my friend. Hey, friend. Um, you can still change these, I believe. So this is like a tactic that they're going to use. So at the moment, we were set to do shock action. And shock action had a tactical effectiveness of 0%. Well done. Well done. <laughs> I'm glad you've chosen the best thing to do. So you can change it. So we can have envelopment. We can have skirmishing. We can have deception. Or we can have a bottleneck. Now, against archers and those guys... Oh, now, look at that skirmishing. 
that looks tremendous. So if we choose skirmishing, it's 71.8% effective. We get a 6% effectiveness against archers. And I think, what's that? The light infantry provide plus... Oh no, that's who we're getting a bonus with. Ah, right, I see. Not against. Oh, right, hang on. This might be quite complicated. How do I work out what the best thing is to do against the uh, against the archers and the um, against the skirmishers? Do you know what? I don't know right now, but skirmishing gives us the biggest boost because we've got archers and light cavalry and those guys. We've got the light infantry in. So I think we go for skirmishing with them. That gives them a big boost. It's certainly better than shock action. I mean, you can see over here the boost that we'd get. So skirmishing would deal a 14% extra damage against an army using bottleneck. Same for an army using cavalry skirmish, which I don't think we even get the choice of in there. Yeah, look, they've got a different icon. But skirmishing deals 10% less damage against an army using triplex Ah, yes. <laughs> which I don't know what that is, or an army using deception, which is something we can see just there. So, um, so yeah, I, I don't really know what they're going to go for. What is their army again? Yeah, it's mostly archers and skirmishers. So I think we should be right. I think if we put skirmishing on, they might also have skirmishing. So uh, that's probably going to be a good thing. And then let's switch everybody over to that. So it's, oh, hang on. Now these, are, this is different because this has got a lot of light cavalry in. So they get a bigger boost with deception. So let's choose deception for them. And what about you lot over here? What's your best sort of bet? Yours is also deception, I guess, because you've got quite a bit of light cavalry going on. Yeah, okay, well, let's increase their effectiveness. We might as well do that as well. So, yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, we'll lay off buying any more troops for now. I think we just need to sort of try and hold fire, see what's going on in here. Hope they don't come and kill us too soon, because that would be a little bit upsetting. I'd like to get some of these things in first. I want to get another tech in, and I want to get some more archery power, and I want to do some more bits and bobs, and we just need more stats. Oh, crikey. Right, Brigantia, who not that long ago offered us an alliance, and we said yes, are now um, are now not in alliance with us anymore because they broke it down. Brigantia, are you going to declare war on us as well? Is is this going to go badly for us? Who are you now friends with, Brigantia? Okay. Um, I know, I thought you might be allied with Dabunia down here, but no, you're not. You just didn't want to be allied with us for some reason. And also the Gaelic power of Elutia, they're over there, are no longer our defensive league. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know quite how powerful that place would have been with their two cities over there. But there we go. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Um, and then what's this? An envoy from the Gallic local power of Manapia. Where's that? Gallic must be down here somewhere. Where's Manapia? Oh, over there. Oh, okay. Um, in sort of, what's that? Kind of Belgium area? Is that where Belgium is? I'm, sh I'm, showing, I'm showing my uh, ignorance of this area of the world. But that's kind of where Belgium is, isn't it? over there. Um, they want to import furs... From my senior, have we got a surplus? Yes, we have. So we're not exporting, we'll gain the following bonus. Starting experience, 5%. And also it earns us 0.52 gold per turn. Absolutely. Yes, please. We need all the money we can get. We need all the monies that we can sort of cobble together. So yeah, we'll take that. Thank you very much. Oh, and it's an alliance from Trinovantia. Who's those guys down here? Who I've got my eyes on invading at some point. But right now, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea to try and invade them right now because they are buddies with those guys, aren't they? Yeah, they've got an alliance with them. And Dabunia are quite powerful. I get the impression that they're quite good. Hang on, can we have a look in here in diplomacy? Uh, can we see what they've got in terms of... So they've got quite a bit of manpower. They've only got 12 cohorts in their armies, though. That's all they've got. That is their entire military base just there. That's it. Got no ships. Not really bothered about that. Uh, and they've got a number of cities, a number of pops. Do you know what? If they did declare war on us, if they did, we'd probably be okay. It would be everybody else that would come in that would be the problem. If it was just us versus them, we could probably take them. But then if we were fighting them, they would also call in these guys, these guys, these guys, these guys, and these guys. And I think that would be bad. I, I don't think we'd be able to cope against one, two, three, four, five, what, six places and three of which are bordering us. I think that might be quite bad. So, do you know what? I'm going to say yes. Now, what happens if these guys declare war on us? So the Dabunians declare war on us. The Dabunians are allied with both the Trinovantians... Uh, no, not Dabunians, sorry. The Trinovantians are allied with both the Dabunians and us. Do they just pick a side? Do they go, oh, well, um, okay, I'll, I'll actually side with the, the Coritanians because I like them more? I don't know. I don't know what they do, but yes, I will absolutely go for that. Yes, please. We will have a lovely alliance with them because that 
means that that border down there is a little bit more secure, which is a good thing for the minute. Later on, I'm sure we can declare war on them and take it off them at some point. But right now, again, just trying to get some stability in. Time isn't really passing very much because there's you know a few bits and bobs cropping up. So um, yeah, let's just keep going. Let's try and get some more of these stats up at the top. Let's see what we can do without having a big old war, eh, folks? Come on, keep it calm for now. Keep it calm. Inamicus Chorus, who is our tribal head, appears to be developing a strong camaraderie with Bilica Vodonosa. Oh dear, she is the wife of the Elder. Oh, you sly dog. Oh my goodness me. A strong camaraderie. Yeah, I think we know what that means. Sometimes it can be advantageous to have a friend watching one's back, but it is not too late to avoid this situation. Okay, so she is the wife of the Elder, and she's a member of the Vodonosi family. Isn't that also him? Isn't he? A, he's a Vodonosa. Yeah, so hang on. So if we click on him, uh, it's not his spouse, thankfully. Okay, that's good. So it must be uh, characters. How can we work? Where's families? Show families. So yes, Vodonosi. That's, is that her there? Yes. So she's just the wife of the elder, and the elder must be one of these people along here, possibly. Who's, the, who's our elder? Where's that? Our elder is oh below below versus senatus oh yes it's him it's the guy with no top on for some reason so yeah him he's married to her okay yeah this could be potentially a bit suspicious uh inamicus becomes friends with her wife of the elder encourage them to spend less time together that has no effect arrange for them to disagree start seeing billick a wife of the elder as a rival uh no that that's bad that's a bad thing isn't it What's her, what's her loyalty to us? It's just increasing a tiny, tiny little bit. Can I just sort of... I mean, do I want them to become a friend? Or is that going to cause some trouble later on? I mean, maybe it'll oust him from power. I kind of want him to go away because he's just so terrible. Yeah, all right, yeah, go on. Become become better <coughs> friends. I think we know what that means. Ah, and we've now got enough civic power to have an invention. Now, let's just have a quick look just here. Can we get anything good in terms of trade routes? No, there's no trade. There's no trade. I can't even get my hands on some lovely woad. <laughs> Love some woad. But no, there is nothing. We can't do any kind of trade. What we could do is we could take a look at this. These are the governor policies. That's the wording I was trying to find out, whatever I called it. So um, there we go. Cultural assimilation. So it creates a bit of unrest, but... The pops convert every month. There's a chance, a 17.5% chance, that a pop will convert to the Koratani culture. And at the moment, because they're not our culture, they're a little bit sad. They're a little bit glum because, you know, they're still clinging on to their Icenian ways, even though we've stamped all over that. There's just a distant memory now. So, um, yeah, we've kind of got rid of the Icenian way. So they need to come over to our side. The only thing is, that will cost us 55 of our oratory power to go for. That's quite a lot. That's quite a lot of stuff to go for. At the minute, they're generating 10% local tax, which is great. And commerce income is up 10%. I'm tempted to leave it for now. I'm tempted to leave it for now. Let's have a look at inventions. What can we do for this? Now, there is this, standardised measures. That could be very good. National commerce income, 5%. And national commerce area is 243 at the minute. We could up that and get some more from that. That'd be great. Army morale recovery, not so bothered. Herbalism will up our tech speed by <laughs> 5%. It's not really worth it, is it? But okay. Um, that would be not so bad. Diplomatic reputation, because our guy is such an idiot. He has a, a negative of three. So our diplomatic sort of reputation, he's already on minus three. As soon as he walks in the room, <laughs> he comes and goes, hey guys. And everyone goes, oh, him. oh for goodness sake. So um, yeah, maybe that could be quite good. Fabricate claim costs down a little bit. That would be nice. But standardised measures will give us money. It will give us money from the off. That is a good thing. Let's go for that. Absolutely. We can't do trade routes with it. So let's take that. Let's up our money. Yes, please. Absolutely. That is a very, very good thing. I'll take that. Because I want to get more money. Because I want to build some stuff. And I do think that just here would be an excellent spot for a fort. I imagine it would take a long time to construct. That fort there has been building for a long time. Sort of, what, three years maybe? But that'd be really good for a fort. 
So why is this such a good spot for a fort? It's because forts exert something called a zone of control, which all sounds a little bit terrifying, doesn't it? So if you're at war and your enemy are trying to move around the place, a fort stops them from moving around adjacent territories directly. So let's take our capital just here. Let's go over to Rate, the lovely capital city of Rate or Rate, I don't know how you pronounce it, but this one here. If we're at war and we had an enemy just here and they wanted to move to here, they cannot because the fort is here. I don't quite know what the in-game reason for that is. I guess the fort is high up on a hill or something. I don't really know. And they're able to sort of see what's going on. So it stops them doing that. I don't really know how high it would have to be to see all the way over there. I'm not entirely sure. But whatever the case, that's how it works. So the zone of control is on all the adjacent cities. So they wouldn't be able to move. The enemy wouldn't be able to move directly from here to here. They'd have to come out. So they'd have to go, okay, fine. We'll move out of the zone of control. Go to here go, oh, that's lovely, and then come back in this way. And obviously that wastes a bit more time. Maybe this place can't support them, so they'll suffer some attrition and all that kind of stuff. And it just sort of slows everything down. If we put a fort just here, that means there'd be a fort just there, and then a gap, and then another fort just here. So if any of these guys, particularly I'm looking at you, Dabunia over here, if they decided to declare war on us and have a fight, it'd be quite hard for them to move into our territory. It'd be really difficult. At the moment, I suppose they could just come in here and work that way, but they could just have to go here and then try and take the fort, which means that we'll have, then have time to get some troops in to kill them, or they're kind of have to try and work their way through this sort of complicated way around here, and it's all a bit painful and slow. So that might be a really good spot for a fort. That would be great. But yeah, the minute we still don't have the money, and we've still not quite got a picture of what they're going to do. I don't know if they are going to declare war or not. I'm not entirely sure. So let's just, let's move time on a little bit. Again, I know we're not sort of doing a lot in terms of the actual game, but yeah, we're kind of getting planning in and we're waiting for other stuff to happen. Ooh, pillaged. This sounds like a bad thing. A group of soldiers belonging to the army commanded by Venona Inamica. Oh dear, right, yes, here we go. So this is dropping, and are they already causing problems? Oh dear. Um, has, while stationed on a peaceful deployment, absconded in order to pillage the nearby city of Lactodorum. You fools. What is more concerning is that Venona, Venoma sorry, is refusing to punish her legions, citing their extreme loyalty as a reason. We are left in the disagreeable position, yes, you are not joking, of having to choose between forcing our general to crucify his own, her own soldiers, her own soldiers, or appearing weak and soft. We can't help but feel that Venoma knows precisely what she is doing. It must be decimation. So, she loses 20 loyalty. She's got 39. That would plunge her to 19 loyalty. That is bad. So, 19 loyalty means she's going to rebel. I Yeah, she's doing this on purpose. She wants to overthrow us. This could also be all sorts of trouble. So, that would be bad. We lose 900 manpower. That's not so tragic. And... Lactodorum, it's already happened, so it's been looted, so it's got a bit of unrest, and the population growth is down a tiny bit. Or, we can't anger her. Right, okay, so she may have become more ambitious. She gains five loyalty. We lose five popularity. I don't care about that. And it's looted. We're just going to have to just go, oh dear, oh dear, what a terrible shame. Oh, whoops-a-daisy, because we can't afford her to lose 20 loyalty, because that is just terrible. So, oh dear, okay, bye-bye. And that's gone back up. That's quite good. That keeps her off our back for a number of years, which is quite nice. Oh, she is just a pain. She is a thorn in our side. I've just thought there's something we could do with this oratory power. We've got 70 of it. You know, time has been passing and that's slowly been creeping up. We've not been spending it on other things. If we go to our nation overview, we can now implement our second idea. So we've got this military idea in of the reinforcement speed being a bit quicker and the army morale recovering a bit quicker. Then this is a spot for an oratory idea. And if we put an oratory idea into there, we will get ourselves a bonus of one extra military, one civic, one oratory, and one religious power every month, which is brilliant because he's just so terrible. He doesn't generate hardly any of these things at all. So that will be really, really huge. That'll be a big boost. And our country's civilization level goes up 10% as well, which is very good. So how about we do that? We spend 50, I think it's 50. Is it 50? Let's have a little check. Uh, yes, 50 of our oratory power on getting an oratory idea in. Now, there's only three we can have. We can either have this monthly corruption down by 0.1. That sounds like a good thing. That sounds like a good thing. By agreeing to look the other way from time to time, we can lessen our reliance on using currency as a tool for bribery. Okay, or we could go for the generals 
being more loyal to us. Now, that is unfortunately not the clan chiefs. So that's not these folks, because these are the generals of our armies. So they're more loyal to us, and of course the admirals as well. Or we could have improve opinion maximum of 33%. We've only got the one general at the moment. That's the only general we have, and she's in charge of our sort of first thing. What is it? The first war band. That's all we've got. I don't think they come up as generals, do they? No. They're not, they're not a general. She just owns this because that's her retinue, but they're not necessarily a general. So I've only got one general, and her loyalty is pretty good. It's 80, which is the maximum it can be, and it's not changing at all. So it's fine. So we don't need to worry about her getting, you know, becoming disloyal and getting ideas and stuff. So let's discount that one. So it's in the case of monthly corruption down or maximum opinion up. Now, we don't really go and do much in the way of maximum opinions. Perhaps this is a good idea. If corruption were to happen, if we were to you know, pick some perhaps dubious options that could maybe cause some corruption, we can bring it down by 0.1 every month. Wait, that seems quite a lot. That seems quite a lot. Let's do that. Now, again, these ones are probably better. The greyed out ones are probably way more useful. Particularly that look, wrong culture group happiness. That's all this lot, isn't it? That'd be really good if we can make them a bit happier. But alas, we can't do that. Oratory advances is greater or equal to 12. Yeah, we're not even near getting that. But um, this will be good. I think we'll get this. I mean, it's not brilliant, but if we take that, it now means that we get these boosts. Look, we're going to actually get plus one. We're going to get plus three oratory power with the base of plus two and the ideas of the government matching. Oh my goodness me. That's 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 just so much. Plus three every month instead of plus two. I know it's a teeny tiny thing, but that'll really help. That'll be very, very good. And the civilization level goes up as well, which is useful if we want to become a monarchy and all that kind of stuff. So we're a little way off that right now, but there we go. So yeah, that's a good thing. Oh, praise be. We've actually got some oratory power. Well done. <laughs> well done, everybody. Not you. I suppose it's your idea, but you know, could you just maybe talk more and be more charismatic? Oh, I see what loyal cohorts is. So these are the cohorts that she has in her retinue. Hang on, I'll deal with that in a second. Uh, can we move that out of the way? Thank you. Um, so then down here, if you look down here, there's a little hand. And if they've got a hand, it means they're loyal to her. So they will only follow her into battle. There's a little thing here which shows how loyal they're going to be. So there's a 0.10% chance they're going to become loyal. So there's all these modifiers, a base of 0.5, and a head of the family is 0.5. But then, yeah, I don't, I don't know. The loyalty gain chance is 1.5%. This army is pretty nice in battle, and is therefore reduced to 10% of that value. 0.1% chance of cohort loyalty. But they've all become loyal. They've all become loyal to her, which is where she's getting that great big drain from. Loyal cohorts, 0.66. So if she went to war and some of those cohorts died, that would bring that down. That would bring that down because there'd be less cohorts loyal to her because they'd all be, you know, a little bit dead. That could be interesting. Okay, well, let's do it with this. Arbitrary demands. Andraste Vodonosa, our arbitrator, have sent us a demand for funding to do her job properly. The appeal, oh, just some time getting to near 100 gold. You're gonna to want to take loads of gold off, mate. The appeal for more gold seems a bit arbitrary. We have noticed certain issues when it comes to that office lately. Though it seems a bit outrageous, not sending her the money will probably end up causing issues down the line. Hopefully this will be enough. We lose 51.93 gold. Oh my goodness, that's an awful lot. We gain funded arbitrator until the 3rd of April 461, so five years. National Freeman happiness goes up and convert pop cost comes down. Ah, oh, that's, that's interesting. And we gain 25 civic power. Or, you've already got enough money. Um, we lose loyalty from, the, from her, from the arbitrator. And we get underfunded arbitrator, which means our Freemans are sadder and the converting pop costs goes up. Oh, brilliant. Okay, cool. Oh, dear me, mate. Well, we're going to have to do this, aren't we? 50, what's 52? God, I've only got 87. I was just going to get to 100 and build a nice thing. Oh, fine. Okay, at least the Freemans going to be a bit happier. So, yeah, okay, fine. Let's do that. So, yeah, so the, the Freemans are these folks here. They just provide the manpower. So, they're going to be a little bit happier, which is lovely. So, um, yeah, that I suppose that's good. That's good that they're happier. But, um, yeah, I'd, I'd rather keep the money, to be honest. I would rather have kept that money. It took us ages to earn all that stuff. It took us so long. Okay, some fighting has broken out. There is some fighting just here between Voden Budic Budica. Hang on, I thought we eliminated Budica. She was over here. Right, Budica has risen. Budica Vodenosa has arisen. And she is fighting... Uh, who are you? You're the Dabunis. And you're... Who are you? 
You're the head of the Vodanosi family. Hang on, aren't the Vodanosis mine? Hang on, hang on, who are you? Boudica Vodanosa. You're, you're one of our lot, aren't you? This is a bit worrying, isn't it? Um, oh no, there must be some other Vodanosas. There's some other Vodanosas. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, yeah, it's not us. We're not at war. But what is this? Who are they then? The Dabu... Oh, they've revolted. That is part of the revolt. Oh, look at this on our borders. And I'm glad we've got two troops standing nearby because they could easily sort of wander into our territory, I guess. Oh, and look at that. The Dabunians have actually been beaten back. They've lost. And the revolters, the Dabuni revolt, have, have, have beaten away those guys. And they're just going to sort of trudge slowly off with their heads down, looking a bit ashamed. Oh, my goodness me. They've taken this over here. Oh, Oh my goodness me, there is a revolt. There is a, a revolt underway on our very borders. Yeah, these troops are definitely staying here, just in case these guys wander in and start knocking. Oh no, and they're recruiting heavy cavalry. Oh dearie me. Now, where have those guys gone? They've gone out of our sight. Okay, right, that's interesting. Uh, also, a little thing has popped up here. We can call down an omen. We've got the, the, the same ones that we had before. I don't know whether to either save our points, uh, sorry, spend them, or save them for this. Because we could make a sacrifice to the gods. Because we're tribes, people, and we're druids. If we kill an animal, that increases our national stability by one. Now, I don't know exactly what effects that will have. But currently, we get tax increase, research points increase, the popularity of the ruler goes up, and all that kind of stuff. And that's only with the stability of one. If it was two, I don't know what that does. Does that double those? Does it add an extra 25% to them? I don't know. I don't kind of know what the full effect is. I would like to find out. I think we save that. How many points do we get? We get plus five each month. Yeah, that might take a little while to accrue all the way up to 300. But I think that's got to be a good thing. Stability overall has got to be a very good thing. And those omens can wait. I mean, yes, okay, we could be increasing our taxes or our commerce or whatever. But yeah, I'd rather get stability up just to see what it does. Also, that's coming down quite nicely. Aggressive expansion coming down. Lovely. That is very nice. So yeah, all these things are... Uh, having less effects, so the wrong culture happiness is now not quite so bad. It was 1.6, was it, at the start? So that's, you know, that's coming down. It's all good. I do need to keep an eye on these. They're taking these places. Look at that. Dabunia are going to be in... They're in serious trouble. Oh, yeah, they're down here, look. They're down on this border, sort of replenishing their troops and maybe thinking about going back in. But they're going to take this place. So that's going to be gone. They are losing an awful lot of stuff. We have been insulted. The Britannia local power of Parisia has deeply offended us with the following insult. We shall allow you further than... Th we shall allow you further than this. That's... <laughs> what? That's... <laughs> That's not really much of an insult. Hang on, aren't I allied with you? I, I think I'm allied with you guys, aren't I? Am I not allied with them? I rather suspect I am. Hang on a minute. Diplomacy. Um, Where are we? No, not Dubunia. Us. Us, for goodness sake. We're, we're allied with them. So our allies have just insulted us. Oh, thanks. That's that's really kind. Thanks. Oh, look. We have a Cassus Belli on them. I wonder why. It's because they've insulted us. Maybe that's why. The only thing is, if I declare war on them, I end up at war with pretty much everybody else up there, which would be bad. They have a lot of allies going on and defensive leagues and all sorts. So I don't think I should declare that, uh, war on them. Maybe that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to sort of provoke a bit of a fight, I think. I'm more concerned with what's going on over here in Dubunia because they're losing a lot of territory. They're losing an awful lot of territory up there. Now, what if... Can I go to you and, and have a little declare of war with you? Because I could probably take you guys on. I could certainly take out five city-states, uh, city sort of areas. I could call them city-states. <laughs> Once a Civ player, always a Civ player. Oh, so five cities. I could probably take them out. We've got our fort here to limit their movement. We could bring those guys down, go into here and here, take on these guys, and that would give me, th what, five more things? Five more cities, potentially? Is that something that we are interested in? Also, we can have technology as well. We can have a new invention. Possibly might want to get one of these things in. I don't know. Or do we keep it for something else? Yeah, this, this is very intriguing, isn't it? This is very intriguing. I don't know whether to go to war with the revolters or even if that's a sensible thing or not. Because now, hang on. Hang on, the revolters have come down here. Well, they're, they're taking this place. The Trinovantians. Hang on, who are you at war with? 
Who are you fighting? Oh, you're at war with both of them. I could get some free territory if I take out those revolter people. That could be very useful indeed. I mean, they've only got, what, four, five? They've only got, like, 7,000 worth of troops. I've got enough there to absolutely annihilate them. But then if I'm down here and they decide to attack, I could be in trouble. Do you know what? I think we might do that. I think we might have a little fight with these revolting people over here. But you know what? We shall do that next time out because this is a perfect point to stop. If I now go to war with these guys, I'm going to spend ages moving troops around and doing all that stuff. And this video is going to be incredibly, incredibly long. So it makes sense to do that next time out. But yeah, that is very exciting. I like this. A little opportunity to maybe grab some free land from all these other people and they can't complain because they've not looked after their own territory well enough. So yeah, we can run in and just have a quick little land grab. Hopefully it will work. But yes, find out next time hopefully you are still enjoying this i really hope you are i think this is really good i'm enjoying this an awful lot i know this part has been a bit slower than others we've sort of been dealing with more of the sort of the political intrigue of the clan rather than going and conquering territories and stuff we've been dealing with loyalty and all that kind of stuff but if you are still enjoying it please do leave a like that would be splendid indeed and also please do subscribe if you are not already just keep up to date with how we get on here in imperator road but for now thank you very much for joining me in the geek cupboard and i'll see you next time Flying rhinos are not allowed. Pink hippos are fine, but no flying rhinos. Doing that for that length of time is making me feel very uncomfortable. You're like violating me with your weird zebra eyes. Get off. Mystic. Okay, this is just an acid trip. If we can crash into a rainbow, then something is fundamentally wrong with the world. Whoa, you cheating giraffe git.